Hi, everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Ooh. Okay, so in today's episode, I am very excited to share with you about how to have better relationships. I realized that through my background in psychology, studying somatic therapy for 10 years, and in my own interpersonal dynamics, really going through it. I have been through probably seven major relationships over the course of my life, including a six-year marriage. I've really seen a lot and I've experienced a lot and I've also coached a lot of people through their different relationship dynamics. And also I think just hosting play parties, you know, you, you really, people tell you a lot of things that are happening within their relationships and because we're all trying to figure it out you know so today's in today's episode I would am excited to share with you about how men can show up in a way where it's actually benefiting them and the women in their life Uh, today we're going to talk about heterosexual dynamics um, but this also applies to anyone with the polarity dynamic of masculine and feminine so if you're if I'm speaking about men and you're in a same sex dynamic, um, then I'm talking to the person in that dynamic who leads with their masculine. Okay. So let's dive right into it. What I've realized is that people, people, uh, everyone in the world today in our, especially in our Western culture, we're doing our best to orient from the place that men and women are inher- inherently equal, right? And this makes sense because we want to have equal rights. We basically, as the feminine, we choose to be treated and honored in a way that is honoring us as humans because for thousands of years, women has have been seen as objects um, and mostly for the male pleasure, for bearing children, it's like, Our bodies have been used as these vessels, but the rest of us have not been really appreciated and honored as as we should be, as these goddesses, right? So in today's culture, we have flipped it almost the other extreme where, uh, you know, women are fighting for equal rights and I totally honor all of that and support that and a right to what happens with our bodies around abortion, all the things, right? But what I've noticed is that like, you know, from one extreme, we usually go to the other extreme in our psyches and our cultures because we're trying to understand what is the healthy dynamic here. So if one extreme that wasn't healthy has played out for a while, we usually go to the other extreme and then something happens where it balances in the middle if we are conscious enough of it (laughs) individually and as a mass culture, right? So In my opinion and what I've learned through my lived experience with my own relationships and with coaching women women around their relationships is um, (laughs) there's something that has really gotten fucked up. So I'm going to explain it to you. And it's around the idea of the masculine taking the lead in certain ways within the relationship. So for me, especially being a woman growing up in a dynamic where the the masculine in my life my father was leading in a way where it was disempowering me and I felt controlled by it I went from the other extreme where I was running my whole life wanting to be in very close deep intimate relationships but anytime a man took a lead and took the lead in some way my psyche would interpret it as control and this was also then therefore interpreted as disempowerment So I would go from extremes where I would either attract in a partner who wasn't necessarily leading with his masculine. Let's define what that means first before I go into it. So for me, a healthy man leading with his masculine uh, energy within a dynamic. And I want to point out here that this actually is what makes men feel the best. So you're not just doing this for the women, but this is actually your natural energy flow through your body of how you're meant to show up in the world. (laughs) And this is what actually feels the best in your body as a man. So for me, uh, and what I've researched and what I've experienced and what I have coached on is a healthy man showing up for the woman in his life. So this can be his romantic partner, specifically talking about romantic partners in this episode, but 
this can also be, you know, for the, your sisters, your, your, your mom, like any woman in your life, your, your friends who are women, the best way for a man to show up is to, the way I like to show, to describe it is, is basically like you are fending for the women in your life. So you are creating a safe container for them to uh, relax, unfold, for them to not have to be in their masculine energy. So men normally lead with the 3D stuff that we have. So like the physical things in our world, this is, this is the man's like forte. This is like his specialty. So he, if he's really leading the women in his life in a way that is empowering them, and giving them more energy and all all the beautiful things that we as women actually want, he's stepping into the role of how can I create the best emotional, energetic container for the women that I love so that they can feel safe to drop more into their feminine. And what does that actually look like? That means like taking care of things in the 3D reality for the women in your life. So this could be just thinking of things that they need, helping them, like structuring. <laughs> I have a, a friend who like her, she came to me, my girlfriend, and she was like, my, my husband is helping me to structure my schedule so that I can make sure that I um, do all of the business things. She's an entrepreneur like me. So she's like, so I can make sure I'm on track with like all of my business things that I want to do. But also he like structures in time for me or it works with me in the beginning of the week, so I structure in time on my calendar for self-care. So <clears throat> he's not only like fending for her and has her back and helping create a, a container for her, um, for her business, but also for her own well-being. And she she was saying to me and my girlfriend, she's like, at first I thought, is this a negative thing that he like wants to do this for me? And then she was like, and then I just allowed myself to drop into it. <clears throat> and... Um, she said it's so supportive for her. It helps her to feel this containment of like, okay, I can operate in my feminine because my husband, they do like a business meeting at the beginning of the week for her and our business self-care meeting where he, she, he basically just asks her like, so what do you have going on this week? How, can, how do you think you best can you can structure this? And then, okay, are, did you book in your massages, your self-care, your time with your girlfriends, our date night? So then at the beginning of the week, she can create this structure for her that is able to she's she can operate in and operate in within her feminine this is a very small example some other examples that uh, how men can show up for the women in their life is to pay for things you know like there's there is such a programming that we have it's probably gonna trigger a lot of people um there's a, such a programming that we have that women need to completely fend for themselves, especially financially, because, you know, they've been controlled in their life through finances. This is something that I definitely experienced. So I want to go back to what I was saying earlier was I would go into dynamics with men where I was like, OK, yeah, you can take care of me and I, this feels really nice. And then I would feel controlled whether it was actually happening or not, because I didn't really understand this whole thing about containment, a man fending for you, leading. I just assumed that any time a man was trying to get into my business, it was like him trying to control me. And so I would run away from that. I would find a reason for the relationship not to work out. And then I would attract in a man who was completely not leading and was may maybe more in their feminine and would let me take the lead and take control of everything, the schedule, what's happening in our community, you know, our business. And I would be leading on everything in, in my masculine. And then I would get really frustrated and really burnt out because I was like, like just tired energetically like it didn't feel good in my body and I knew that this wasn't this wasn't what I actually wanted this wasn't healthy for me but because I didn't have a marker of what felt good for healthy containment healthy masculine showing up um, because my dad was using it as a way to control as a way to disempower when I was when I would leave the relationship with a man again remember I've had like seven major relationships and it was like ping-ponging back and forth between these two dynamics. When I would leave the relationship with a man where he was more in his feminine and I had to be more of my masculine, I would be like, oh, okay, I am ready for a man who's, you know, like 
taking the lead on the 3D reality so that I can be more in my feminine. <clears throat> I'm open and I'm receptive to this. But my marker, my vibrational marker of what a man does when he is taking the lead was associated with my father. So then I would attract in men that were controlling me or using money to control me or in some way not empowering my energy through the structure and through the containment, but actually constricting and disempowering my energy. So going back to men paying for things, <laughs> this is going to be really triggering for a lot of women to hear, especially because they feel like, yeah, I don't want to be controlled. So the way that this actually works is if you can pay for something on your own, if you actually can afford stuff that you're desiring on your own, this takes away from the need to control or like the the idea that something is being controlled through you getting this thing. So like if you can pay for a dinner on your own, but then a man offers to pay for dinner and he just wants to do it. This is what the man, one of the men in your life that show up for you. It's like whew, this feeling of like, oh, thank you. That really means a lot to me. I really appreciate that, you know, and what I have witnessed within my male friends when I ask them, because I'm like this little researcher, right? I'm like figuring out our human psyche when it comes to relating. I find it all super fascinating. I'll ask my guy friends. I'm like, how does that make you feel when you, when you pay for things for the women that you care about? And they all have told me, you know, like if it's coming from them and it's coming from them wanting to do it, right? They're like, wow, it feels so good. There's just, he's, and some of them are like, shy about explaining this because there is such a cultural programming we have that like like people are just so confused on how to show up for each other right especially men they want to they want to show up in a way that's empowering for us and so a lot of them are like I don't know how to say this because like I I really it makes me feel good to take care of the women in my life that I love you know and and it's such a natural thing and at the same time, they're like, but I, I don't want to disempower them, you know? And so they were, a lot of them have told me, they're like, wow, Brittany, it just makes me feel really good that you're like allowing yourself to receive, you know? Like I have, like at any given moment I can call and I have many male friends on the island who will help me move things, who will, you know, like take care of Afro if I really need it, who will pick me up if my bike is broken, you know, like just... And I also have women, but there's something about allowing a man to show up for you that makes them feel really good because men, the, they want to have purpose in their life in the way of showing up physically for the women that they care about. This is just how they are wired. And so what I was saying in the beginning about like the extremes, so we've gone from men um, showing up for women and like historically only up until the point that it benefits them, right? So then it becomes this disempowering thing. Like I will fend for you, I'll show up for you, but bec it's because, you know, you're mine. Like you, basically you're my property. And so you have to do what I want and whenever, whatever, whatever, right? So that's unhealthy. But then we went to the other extreme recently in society where uh, men and women are equal. And so they should therefore equally do everything. I will tell you that it is women's forte, it is their expertise to handle our emotional reality and our connection to the spirit world. This is women's forte. This is their expertise. This is where they can show up within a dynamic and, and really support the men in their life. You know, when a guy is going through something and he needs to be able to access his emotions and he hasn't been taught these tools or had a safe space for them in his life, wow, it is so beautiful for a woman, the woman in his life that he cares about and that cares about him to be like, let me create this safe emotional container for you, you know? So there's this balance of what, it's like, yes, technically we can all do everything. We all have masculine and feminine energies inside of us. Do we both individually want to do everything by ourselves? So this is the difference between codependence and interdependence. Codependence is, I don't think I can do this on my own, so I need you to help me meet some of my basic needs in my life. And so therefore, I'm like really dependent on you. Like this is, a, this is an extreme thing. Like I need you for my survival. That's not a yummy energy. Interdependence, so this is healthy dependence on each other. Interdependence is, I can do this on my own, but it feels so much better when we're doing it as a team. 
it feels so good in my body when the men in my life show up for me and help me move things and take care of my dog with me. And just like, like think of the things in my life that I need and like remind me of them, like basically create structure and think of things ahead of time so that I can drop more into my feminine and be like, oh yeah, thank you for thinking of me. Yeah, I do need to get this thing done. And they're like, well, let me do it for you. Is that okay with you? And I'm like, yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. This is so helpful for me. Um, and I just think that if all of us allowed ourselves, like, what if you just went through this as an experiment? So there's a part of you that might be getting triggered when I'm saying these things, but what if you allowed yourself to drop into this as an experiment with the people that you trust? So say you're in a couple, like a man and woman dynamic, or again, same sex, but whoever's leading on the masculine. What if you allow the masculine energy and you have, if you're a woman, you can send this video to your partners and they can watch this. But what if you allow the man in your life to take a, a healthy lead on certain things within the physical dynamic. So I'm, I'm talking about like, allow them to show up for you in the physical. And if you're a man listening to this, the experiment is to start taking it, taking responsibility in a healthy way for the women in your life. So again, this can be your partner, your um, your female relatives, or this can be friends that are women. So like take it upon yourself to take responsibility. I really believe that most of the things that are fucked up in our society right now are because men are not taking responsibility. And you know what the most ironic part of all of that is? It actually feels better for a man when he takes responsibility for the women in his life. When he takes it upon himself that he is part of what is helping make their lives thrive. So yeah, they can survive on their own, but he's making their life exponentially better by being in it, by showing up in the 3D and helping with things. And like, when I think of it, it's like creating this like safety bubble around the women in your life. So you're like, okay, I don't have to be responsible for all of the women in the world, but for the ones that I love, and then I have this, this can be a couple girl, like friends that are women, this can be your partner, again, your mom, your sisters. And for these specific women, it is my mission to make sure that they are safe, they feel safe, energetically, emotionally, physically, that they are okay. And also that I can create in whatever way to make their life better than it already is. I can create a better world for them. That is your mission as a man. And I'll tell you that when you take on this responsibility and when you make it your mission and you're like, okay, let's go, I sign up for this, you will have so much more energy and so much more purpose to go out in the world and do all the things that you already wanted to do. Because you're no longer just doing it for yourself. You're doing it for the people that you love and what you do in the world, the money that you make, whatever, the goals that you want to accomplish, the vision that you, your soul mission that you're here to do. When you go out and do that, it is going to directly support and provide for the women in your life that you love. I just got goosebumps as I said that because it's like, this is, I feel a key factor that is missing in most dynamics right now in society. What we see in the world is women who are fending for themselves, taking responsibility for themselves. And that's great when you prove it. As a woman, it's very important to prove to yourself that you can take care of yourself. I remember me going through this process and wow, it is so empowering when you can just like dance around your house and just be like, I paid for this. I paid for that. I did this. I support myself. I am like a badass boss, babe. I can support myself and I can live the life that I choose to live. And also when you are like, how do I say this? If you are a woman in the world and you feel that you are the only you are the only person taking care of yourself that you like don't have anyone else to rely on energetically, emotionally, especially the men in your life. This will eventually make you tired. You will eventually feel burnt out. This is what you see a lot of women that I work with when I coach. They are women who are like me, who were in corporate and 
or they were in the world in some way where they were in their masculine energy leading a lot. They were like boss babes doing all the things, you know, da, da, da. And after a while, they just got tired because it's not natural for a woman. So I want to be very clear about this. It's not natural for a woman to be completely alone in the world and fend for herself. It is very natural for a woman to be a boss babe and to be able to accomplish whatever her soul mission is, which can include financially being very abundant and making all the impact in the world through her business or whatever impact she's here to make. But what I'm saying is those women, those boss babes, they should, I, I hate saying the word should, but it is the most healthy dynamic for them to have a lot of people behind them supporting them, especially the men in their life. So um, I can't tell you how many times like I am in the middle of like hosting a play party, uh, launching a course or doing a lot of coaching calls. And it's so supportive for me when I have male friends who just message me and they're like, hey, um, I know you're really busy these days. Do you want me to pick up Afro and take her for a walk? Or like another friend's like, here, let me drop off, you know, your favorite drink in the morning so that you don't have to leave and you can just start focusing on what you're doing. And I'm just like, oh, thank you. Like this is, this is very supportive, you know, or like the other day I was negotiating a business deal and I had a male friend come over and he's like, I'm just here with you until it's over. Like I'm here as emotional support, guidance, whatever you need. If you just need to scream, if you just need to like co-regulate and tell me all your emotions, I am here. I am this rock for you. And I will tell you, I don't know if I would have gotten through that situation without that person. Probably physically, I would have gotten through it. But emotionally, it would have taken a lot more of a toll on me. And also, it just wouldn't have been as fun, you know? And of course, that could have been a woman who showed up for me. I'm not saying that, like, women, we need to show up for each other as well. But I want to appreciate the men in my life that are showing up for me and creating this healthy container for me to be in my feminine that is what is helping me to expand in a way in the world and allow myself to receive more success more financial abundance make more impact because I know that they have my back and they are taking responsibility for my well-being you know for most of my life I have had this in a, re a romantic relationship dynamic, right? So like my partner, whoever that man is, is the one who is taking responsibility for my well-being, making sure I'm okay, you know, all the things. And that's something I have, I have exp what I wanted to say is I have experienced that in a healthy way in my dynamics with my partners. But at the time, I didn't understand it was healthy because it reminded me so closely of the trauma that I had experienced with my father using him taking responsibility and creating a safe container for me to control me. So I want to speak to the women here that if a man is showing up for you and you can feel that he really does care about you and he is here to support you stepping more into your power and just wants to make your life better, please appreciate these men and please tell them how much their support means to you because this is what gives them the energy that is exponential. So this is the masculine feminine energy working in a way where it is exponentially growing. So if a man shows up in your life in a way that is supportive and he's taking responsibility and he's like fending for you, you know, like he's like, I have your back. How can I make your life better? I'm thinking of ways how I can make your life better. Like every week I show up in a way that is making your dreams come true or just like it can be little things. It can be big things. It's just the energy of I have your back and you in exchange really appreciate this man with your words. You know, you're like, I'm, this really means so much to me. This gives me so much energy, you know, to be in my feminine. Thank you so much. Like, your presence in my life matters and it is making my life better. <sighs> if you're a man listening to this, I'm sure you are feeling like you understand what I mean because for a man to hear this, that like their presence in your life is making your life better and that basically their 
being alive in this lifetime is helping the people around them. This is what men are here for. Like this gives their life meaning. This is what, this is like their soul mission. Yeah, they can have their own personal soul mission, but as within relationship dynamics, this is what really, really, really will nourish their soul and give them the energy to go accomplish their soul mission. And I feel like this is what's really missing in the world today. You have all of these men who are basically children in grown-up men's bodies. Because a child who is a man, a, a boy who is like a boy, he is here to receive from the people around him. He's here to grow. He's here to play. The difference between a boy and a man is a man can still play. He can still receive but he uses his masculine energy to take care of the people around him. He shows up for his mom. He takes care of his mom. If your partner does not have a good relationship with his mother, this is a very big red flag. And of course we can have trauma with our parents, right? Like I don't have a good relationship with my dad, but I have done therapy. I have worked through it. I have become available to have a relationship with my dad. I like flew out to California to meet with him. You know, like I made the effort to heal it. And some of this is generational trauma that we're trying to heal. But if the, if your partner or the man in your life is like complaining about their mom, is not appreciating their mom, is thinks that their mom needs to do things for him, this is a huge red flag. This is such a big red flag. So the difference between a, man, a boy and a man is that a man is like, I'm going to use this masculine energy that I have that is here to create things in the 3D reality, not just for my soul mission, but I'm here to take care of the women that I care about in my life. You know, and again, it doesn't need to be the whole world. I've talked to men about this where they get really overwhelmed because they can see or feel what needs to happen. They can feel that they need to step into this role of responsibility. And then they think, oh, does that mean I have to take care of the, all of the women in the world? This is overwhelming. I'm going to shut down and just not engage. No. If each man took care of the couple women in his life that he really loves and that he feels it's his responsibility to make sure that they're safe, abundant, happy, secure, and if every man did this, all of the women in the world would be covered abundantly. All of us women would have multiple men that could show up for us. It could be a partner, our friends, our dad, our brothers, my cousin. I have a male cousin who is like this for me. He just always is checking on me, always want, has my back, always showing up for me. So I have two male cousins actually that are like that. And that from there, in a way, they're kind of like my brothers. I, I associate the energy is very similar to like big brother vibes. And that makes me feel really good. You know, it's important for me as a woman to have these men in my life that I can reach out to, that I can ask for support and that I don't even have to reach out to. They message me and check on me. My godfather messages me. My cousins message me that are men my close male friends, they message me daily, not all, not every day, but one of them will message me every day or multiple of them just to check on me, make sure I'm okay. Ask how, how's it going to, they have a, they have a timeline of what's happening in my life and they take responsibility to check in and check up on that timeline. Like, Hey, what happened in the situation? Did it work out? Do you need any more support? How can I show up for you? Do you want me to listen to your feelings? Do you want, do you want it? Da, 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 like whatever it is, you know, but they are taking responsibility to keep aware mentally of what's happening in my life and to hold space for me to be able to share my emotions. It doesn't mean I don't need them to feel what I'm feeling. I just need them to hold space for my emotions and to do their best to understand why I'm feeling this way. Honestly, all us women really want is for the men in our life to understand. Okay, yeah, I understand why you got really upset about this thing. And then once we hit, hit they hit this point of understanding, we can and we feel like they can understand. Not that they say that they understand. 
oh my gosh, it's so triggering for a woman when you explain something and the guy's like, I got you. Yeah, I totally get it. I totally get it. And you're like, no, I do not believe that you totally get it. I can feel that you do not understand and that you're trying to rush me. You do not want to rush a woman when she's having her feelings. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> so um, I just think it's really important. Oh, and so what I want to say was that once a woman feels that you understand her, when she actually can feel this in her body, then this is the moment when the man can say, do you, do you need something from me? How can I show up for you? So that's when she is open energetically and available for you to, to use your masculine energy to create more safety, security, stability for her. And this can just be by simply asking her, how can I show up for you? And if you feel like you have some ideas of how you can show up for her, you can ask her, do you want, do you want my feedback? Do you like, I have some ideas of how I can help and then give her the opportunity to say, yeah, or like, no, I just needed you to listen. But either way, even if, even the fact that you are asking like, Hey, I want to show up for you more. You know, I have the energy to have your back. I'm taking responsibility for your well being. Even if she doesn't need it in that moment, wow, it feels so good for her to, re to receive your care energetically. And if you're a woman receiving care from men, please, please, please appreciate them. Because this is how the energy exchange will amplify and exponentially grow. A lot of men that I work with, um, they'll tell me that they just stopped, they felt they stopped feeling appreciated by their partner. They felt like it didn't matter how much they showed up for her. It wasn't enough or they didn't feel like the feedback was happening where they could, you know, like when you do something and you care about someone, you just want to know, like, is it working? <laughs> this is what I teach in the play parties. It's like communication is so important and to not take people for granted. So if you're a woman and you've had a whole lifetime of men not showing up for you and then a man starts showing up for you, please don't take it out on him. All the other men that didn't show up for you. I've done that in past relationships and it's not fair to the men. You can share about how you have this pain of past trauma and, you know, like just bad experiences with men, but it is not that man's responsibility to make up for everything behind but you can have what's called a corrective experience. So this is like you've had a lot of bad experiences in one way and then you have an experience where it shifts it, where the person acts like, for instance, men not showing up. Oh, this man shows up. This is correcting within your psyche the possibility that this can happen. So it's a correcting the story in your head of like men don't show up. Oh, wait, one does. Okay, maybe more can. Um, and... What I want to say to women, if you have, if you feel like I don't have any men in my life that do this for me, what I will ask you is, do you have men in your life that you feel really love you? Because maybe they don't know that they can do this. They don't know that it's safe. They don't know that this is what you want. This is what would be supportive for you. So if you do have men in your life, like your partner or your brothers or male friends, the opportunity here, the invitation is one to send them this podcast the two, and, and two is to sit down and have a conversation with them and just be like, I really love you and I appreciate you as a man in my life. And I wanted to share with you like what would feel supportive for me of how you can show up for me. Like, are you open to this and allow them to give you a response, but most likely they'll be like, if they really love you, they'll say yes. And then you can just say, like, I, I recognize that it really helps me, like, just share how they can show up for you. Like, what, what would be supportive for you? Is it to create more of a container for you to share your emotions? Is it that you need actual 3D stuff, that like, things in the 3D world that you need help with? Is it that they can check on you more, you know? Um, is it that, you know, like, anything, anything, anything that feels supportive for you? And another thing that I want to say to women is that, you know, sometimes we have had really bad experiences where we opened up to receive from men and it ended up turning into a really bad situation. So we have some trauma, right? So first I would recommend getting a coach or a therapist with this. I have started to do more one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, and I would very much love to help you with this 
So please reach out to me. The second thing, this is just a general tool that you can you can work with, but you might need some help implementing it. Is I just want to put plant this in your psyche. You need to be vibrationally open that it, there are safe men in the world that can show up for you in a way where you can let go of control. You can feel ah, more in your feminine. You can feel safe in this container of safety and this bubble of energy, this yummy energy that they're creating around you, like a bubble of protection. So that is something that as the feminine, we have a lot of a lot of healing that we have already done. We've Some of us are getting frustrated with how much healing we're doing for the collective, but this is what our soul chose, and it's also part of the game we're playing. And one of the healings that we can do is to, you know, allow in the idea and the reality that there are good men out there that do want to show up for us and they don't want anything back. It actually feeds their energy when all we do is appreciate them and are excited for them to be in our lives in some way where it makes our lives better. And and that this can be in a way where it is empowering for us, right? So... Um, I just really love this because this is something I've, I've personally had to work through within my psyche and it has been a very hard one to let go of. Uh, I've been doing internal family systems therapy, like receiving it recently. And this was one of the core, the core things that needed to be unburdened, unpacked was that it is safe to receive from the masculine and that it can be supportive and nourishing. And also, because I'm in a mode right now where I'm single and I'm very happily single, it has been really beautiful for me to allow myself to receive this from the men in my life that I'm not, it's not my partner, right? Because in the past I would kind of, you know, just be hanging out with my partner, traveling with my partner, doing business with my partner, whoever, whoever that was. And so a lot of this would be received energetically from the man that I was dating and I actually feel like you know I always talk about like tribalism and how we're meant to live in tribes and in a traditional tribe you would have your partner that you know is your your life partner that you would have your children with but you would also be supported by an entire tribe and so the women in the tribe would be supported by all the men in the tribe so it was not so much weight on one man to take care of everyone. Uh, they were doing it together, right? And so um, if you are in a primary partnership, like if you have a boyfriend or a husband, I invite you to also allow this in from other men in your life where it's healthy to receive. So again, m friends that are men, your brother, like any male relatives that you have, your dad and stuff, because this is, this is the most healthy way, in my opinion, is to receive this energy from the collective of the men in your life, not just from your primary partner. One, because it puts a lot of pressure on our partner. Um, because sometimes they need, they're, they're under resourced and they can't show up even, even when they want to. And two, it's really important to have a foundation of men in your life that are showing up for you outside of your romantic relationship because you don't want to connect your healthy receiving and masculine energy. Okay, I'm trying to put this in, basically like if you break up with this person, this man, um, you can associate in your psyche this healthy masculine containment and responsibility from your primary partner and it will be a lot harder to break up with them because your psyche is so used to getting all of this energy from one person. Where if you spread this receiving through the, the healthy men in your life, it will be less hard on your psyche if it's not healthy to be with this person anymore to let go because it's like, okay, I also have other men who are fending for me. It's not just, you know, because as a woman, there is two things that happen when you break up. There's probably many things that happen. Why did I say two? But I just want to talk about two of them. <laughs> One is like you're 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 sad because you love this person that you're breaking up with, right? Uh, so there's like the heartbreak that happens. But also some things that a lot of women don't uh, consciously realize is that we are so programmed as women to be in a 
relationship in order to get this healthy containment from the masculine that it can actually feel unsafe literally energetically physically emotionally financially unsafe to be in the world as a single woman which is not actually true like you are safe in the world but i'm saying that in your psyche you could feel unsafe i have i have done this in like breakups in the past where i was safe and always but my psyche had these alarm bells that were going off of like unsafe, unsafe, unsafe because I was just so used to connecting my safety to being in a relationship. And what I meant by that was me and my feminine energy, me feeling safe to be dropped into my feminine was connected to my partner, my primary partner fending for me and taking responsibility for me. And so when that was gone, it was like, oh my gosh, I'm, am I safe? Is everything okay? And you, this could be a very new thing for your, your psyche to take in, but I want to say that through my lived experience and through working with many women, this is what I have come to the conclusion of. It's very normal to feel this way. And we just have so much programming in general in society that we're, we are our happiest while in a relationship. So, and I don't necessarily believe that. But I do believe that we need this healthy flow of masculine and feminine energy for men and women. We need this going through us all the time within our relationships, whether it's with our family, with our soul family, our blood family, soul family, friends, a partner. And a lot of all of these um, needs got put on the primary partner. And I'm like, let's spread this out, you know? And this needs to happen then Therefore, in order for this to work, the men who are listening to this, it is your opportunity and your invitation to take responsibility, not just for your primary partner, but for the women in your life that you're close to. And wow, that I feel like if everyone applied this, like there would be such a vibrational shift in the collective because women will just be like, ah, I'm safe, I'm feeling nourished, you know, like I'm taken care of, like I have this this foundation of safety and this bubble of protection around me always and not just from my primary partner. And the men in the world would be like, I have so much more purpose and meaning and, you know, like my life is worth something because I know that I'm directly impacting the women in my life that I love. And this is one thing I really want to pop the bubble on is um, these Peter Pan boys in the world. You see them a lot here on Copenhagen who literally are not tied to anything. They don't have any responsibilities. They make enough money to live here in Thailand and just float around. And then they get into dynamics with women and they're just kind of like, yeah, you know, like I have nothing to offer basically. And I could just leave at any moment because they're not taking responsibility. And that's why we say Peter Pan. Cause like when Peter Pan was like in never, never land, he didn't have to do anything. He was just playing all day long. And yeah, you could be a Peter Pan man your whole life, but I will tell you that you probably will not feel the same amount of purpose and meaning if you chose to actually step into manhood, which in my opinion, again, is taking responsibility, not just for yourself, but for the women around you and like planning ahead for them, thinking about what can make their life better, showing up physically, holding this container for them so that they don't have to take care of everything themselves. And when a woman receives this energy, wow, us as women, we are the creators. We are the ones who are the visionaries. We are here connected directly to spirit through our womb. We are here to birth the new earth. But in order for us to help bridge that and make that transition in the world, we need men to help us with all the 3D things and to hold the safety so that we can feel physically and energetically safe so that we can drop into spirit more and then bring through and create all these beautiful things in the world. So when a woman has a man 
or the men in her life that are fending for her and taking responsibility for her, it's not like she's just laying around eating chocolates, you know, and grapes and just like, no, she's like using this energy, receiving this masculine energy to create things in the world, to be this boss babe in whatever way that means for her. That can be running a business, that can be having children, that can be, you know, taking care of her community. But this masculine energy is what fuels her to feel safe enough to unfold. And when a woman is unfolding in her full true potential, her power is limitless. It is literally exponential. It is just like an atomic bomb going off. But she needs to feel this protective bubble around her from the men in her life in order to really let that bomb off. Because otherwise, it is what we call creative chaos, and it's not able to flow through in the physical world in a way that is making sense in our linear process. If we were in spirit and women are just (laughs) atomic bombing off creatively, things would just keep creating because it's in spirit. But okay, I'm getting too uh, esoteric right now. What I'm trying to say is, yes, women can do this on their own. It feels better if a man is showing up for you and taking responsibility in a way that is actually supportive and nourishing and you feel more in your power. And men need for you to really appreciate them and, and nourish them. Do you know what men really need? They need softness. So many men in the world have never had a safe container for them to connect to their own feminine energy inside of them, which is their connection to their emotions and their connection to spirit. And what will activate a man to feel safe to connect to this is for him to receive the energy of the women around him being soft with him. So this is not being motherly. Motherly is a woman taking care of you what we're talking about here is for a woman to show softness. Have you ever seen a man and a woman looking at each other and the woman goes and puts her hand gently on his face and caresses his face and just looks into his eyes and is loving? Or if you look into, if you're in a coffee shop and you see a man and woman talking and then she reaches over and just holds his hand and the energy is nourishing and supportive and soft. This is what I'm talking about. It's an energy of I'm here. It's okay for you to share your emotions. I am a safe container for that. I'm not going to fix your emotions. I'm not even going to suggest what you should do because this is your job as the man. You, I believe in you. I believe in you that you have this and that you will figure it out. That's what, that's what men need. They need a safe container for it to feel soft for them to get in touch with their emotions without feeling judged. Do you know a lot of men that I talk to, they say that the, the scariest thing for them is to share their emotions and to cry in front of a woman because they have been programmed to believe that this is what is making them weak. This is, and if they're weak, they are no longer allowed, you know, they're not viable men for the women. And if they're not viable men, and strong and protective men, and they're not going to be allowed in these women's lives. So what actually happens in a man's psyche is sharing emotions, being vulnerable, equals disconnection from everyone I care about. And if you ask a woman, sharing feelings, being vulnerable, what does that equal for her? She's just like, that's just living my life. <laughs> you know, like, it's not gonna, it's not even a question of like, this is going to create disconnection or c- connection. It's just like, this is me just existing. Well, for a man, it's a very different situation. For men, this can literally feel psychic, like in your psyche, this can feel the difference between life and death. Because in today's world, we're not in physical tribes where if you get kicked out of the tribe, you might die physically like out in the wilderness. But in today's world, what we, what a lot of men and what we all fear is, well, I don't want to say we all fear. This is a fear of many people is the to be psychologically exiled from your community or from the people that you love. But what the difference is, is that in our bodies, it shows up the, the, the cortical response, the actual physical response in your body somatically, the sensations in your body shows up as if you are back in the tribes and you might get kicked out and you might die in the wilderness. So there's a physical reaction 
of unsafety that most men feel when they are in front of a woman and they're about to share their emotions. It's literally like, I might die, I might die, I might die. And they might not consciously be aware of this, but they'll feel this constriction, this adrenaline rush, this, this sometimes freezing and being like disconnected from their own bodies because it's better to be disconnected for them than to actually connect and to share and then feel disconnected from the people they, they love. When I realized that men go through this, I was like, babe, no, because we all deserve to feel our feelings. As humans, we all have emotions. This is part of the human experience. But as men, they are not allowed in today's society, they've been programmed since birth to not feel their feelings. So one of the biggest gifts that a woman can give to a man is to one, understand that this is their reality. And if they don't, under, if the man doesn't understand it, then to share tools so that they can understand. And also to just be the safe place for them. Um, there's an illustration one time I heard where it was like, the man creates the home, like physically, like, you know, men build the house. And then the woman with her heart and her softness and her energy is what makes the house feel like a home. So it's like the masculine creates this bubble of safety and containment and protection. And the woman is inside just filling it with her softness, her, her loving energy. And this is what makes men feel at home with women. And what a woman feels at home with a man is when he's protecting her and taking responsibility for her. So in all of your relationship dynamics, you can start thinking of it in these terms. As a woman, do I create safety? Am I a safe emotional space for the men in my life? And as a man, do I create physical safety? Am I taking responsibility and protecting the women in my life? And if both people are doing this back and forth and appreciating each other for this, wow, the energy is so beautiful. I think of everything in energy. I really see energy. And when I see this, like I was saying, like those examples of like the softness, you know, that a woman can offer, it's so beautiful for a man to receive. And it, even if they aren't consciously aware of it, you can just see it in their energy field. Oh, how they soften and how they feel beautiful. In the sense, <laughs> when I say feel beautiful, they just feel, I'm thinking of the energy that I see, but what if I'm talking in 3D terms, I can sense that like their shoulders soften, they drop in, you know, they, there's, because I do this with a lot of men, like, um, that I connect with, I really, I really create this bubble of softness within the containment they provide. And I can just see it in their eyes. It's like this, like, first it's like, is it safe? First it's confusion. Then it's, is it safe? Then it's this, ah, <sighs> coming home this feeling of like, I don't know if I want to laugh or cry at the same time. And I've had many men say to me, like, I've never experienced this level of softness. And I'm like, it's because of everything I just talked about in this podcast. It's like the energy exchange is fucked up between the masculine and the feminine. And I'm here to be one of these people to try and guide you to make this more balanced within yourself and within the world because when i teach you just by you embodying it you're already shifting the consciousness like as a mass consciousness vibrationally energetically we were all connected so that's why they say like when you when you are getting your inner world and your energy in alignment you are affecting the whole world just by you working on yourself and when each of us work on ourselves, we affect the whole energy bubble of the whole world because we're all connected. <sighs> and it's really beautiful. So that's what I'm here for. This is part of my soul mission. Um, there's a lot more I want to talk about, but I just wanted to create this um, container for you is that if this is something that you are really excited to work on, one men who would like to be able to create more of a container for women. How do I do this? How do I show up for the women in my life? The women, there's so many of you that I work with that would love to drop more into your feminine softness and you don't know how to do it. 
And also you don't want to give up your power and like, you know, you know, you're this boss babe in the world or, you know, you're meant to do such big things in the world. So like, where's the balance in the middle? And this is why I'm opening up my one-on-one -on -one coaching because I closed it for a long time because I was working on other projects and also I was in a relationship. I was giving all my energy for a relationship. And now that I'm choosing to be single right now, I'm really excited to give this energy to you and to share with you all these things that I have learned. I've learned so many things and I'm so excited to share and up-level all of you and to hold this bubble of softness for you so that you can expand and guide you. And that is something that I am so excited for. This is part of my soul mission. And I've start, I have opened up a couple slots and um, as I'm working with some of you, I'm remembering why I love one-on-one -on -one coaching so much because it's just like, I can directly see how much I'm impacting your life. And also it gives me this touch point of working with you individually of what's happening in the collective, because I really believe we're all going through very similar things. And I do see patterns. And when we can, when I can see the pattern, I can make a podcast about it. So this podcast is about, is triggered from one of my coaching sessions I just did recently. And I was like, wow, okay, this is really inspiring for me to make a podcast and share with the collective. Um, so yeah, it just keeps the energy keeps going back and forth and it's super beautiful and I'm here for all of it. <sighs> so sharing some of this yummy energy with you and I hope that you have a beautiful day. You are, you deserve everything. You deserve all the beautiful things that your heart desires. And I invite you to allow to like close your eyes at some point, even if you're walking and you're listening to this or whatever, but if you're sitting down right now, I invite you to close your eyes and imagine warm, beautiful energy coming from the, like coming in the top of your head all the way down your body and through, through your feet and all the way into the ground and just allow energy, warm, golden energy into your body just taught you a little bit of energy work. So there you go. A lot of you asking me about energy work. Because <laughs> um, we really, our bodies are really these vessels for source energy to go through. And through us working through these negative beliefs and uncovering the things that are not part of our authentic selves, the more that we get closer in alignment, which is actually us being our authentic selves, then the more the energy flows through us and the more we're able to create in the world and just also feel really good, the more we're able to feel better in the world. <sighs> okay, that is it for me. I'm sending you lots of love and I hope you have a beautiful day.